Good afternoon from a pretty cloudy Sunday afternoon in May. Looks like uh, all the April showers, like for the last few years really, have all gone and uh, shoved themselves into May. But uh, we had some glorious weather, some beautiful hot weather previous to this. And with the uh, little showers of rain we've been having, we are getting everything sprouting. So uh, I'm going to give you a little bit of a tour and uh, a bit of an update. Okay, so let's start a little bit of a tour around here, shall we? So we've got the blackberry down here, and then the white grape. This white grape is doing really nicely. And as you can see, it's budding up beautifully. Then we can come around to the climbing hydrangea. As you can see, there's a lot of nice young leaves coming in here. Bridget's planters here and if we go in for a nice close look you can see there we've got some great sweet peas just popping up not sure how long it'll be before we start seeing lavender at the front though oh nice big update tin roof still needs the uh, the ridge line screwing down properly but we have a decent tin roof now, so that will get rid of any of the uh, the leaks from the uh, cheap shed roof. And we've done the same with the potting shed. If I come around here, we can have a look. So that collects uh, most of our water, this particular one. Bridget's peony. And as you can see there, nice bud there coming up on that one. Really good, that is. Tulips finally coming up, seeing as we planted them late, along with a couple of weeds. The asparagus bed, nothing popping up on that, but then we did just replant everything. The passiflora, beautiful plant that is. And in fact, this one's going all the way up here. Nothing from the basil or the chives yet, but I'm not surprised. It's only been a couple of weeks. But the potatoes, you can really see they're starting to come along now. Especially if we just look down here. Bit of an unremarkable looking plant, but they will grow into a nice big bush. And they'll pick up. Brassica beds, still not a lot done in them. We've drilled holes in these two troughs and filled them up with compost and there's various different herbs in those Bridget's doing the labels for those thankfully she made a note of what we put in and where we put it rhubarb we've now had two full pickings out of it nothing off of that one I don't think or this first one but those two main ones loads out of them the gooseberries look at those We're starting to get lots of them already. But we do need to do a massive prune on that. That will come later. We've got one fruit bush there, another one there. This one's starting to finally sprout some life into it. The pond's still looking a bit murky, but uh, that plant's come up beautifully. And if we come in nice and close, So it's full of wildlife too, it's beautiful. So all the blossoms come off this one now. This I believe is an apple. Maybe wrong, it might be a cherry actually. I don't know, we'll know when it comes out. We've got the cherries over there and then we've got these two blackberries. Another gooseberry down here. This one is a little bit further behind Set the camera focus, there we go. You can still see it's got some fruit. And uh, the strawberries are really kicked off. They're looking really good. Let's see what we get on those. So the blossom's coming off this one as well now. My mum's rocking chair. Just finished repainting that. 
not going for a perfect look on it so i haven't sanded it down or anything like that um, literally just want to get it repainted and the rust destroyed so i've put a director rust paint on done a nice silver rather than black the uh, the woods that's going to uh, be on the slats for the actual seating itself we're doing some sort of blue on that should be similar to uh, the potting shed blue i was about to try and turn around and show you it there but the door's open so you can't see it uh, nothing from the leaks down the end but these shallots they're going lovely this one's just starting to pick up we've got the one over here and even this one here but of course we've been having issues with birds so we now have bird scare tape up which when the wind picks up makes one hell of a racket and we've got the peas down here as you can see some aren't great but like this one this one's really clinging on nicely now and if i show you down here all the uh, other pea shoots are coming up which is great dahlias are starting to come up nicely got the nasturtiums and the uh, marigolds they're looking really good and then the same with this side we've had lots of you can see lots of pea shoots coming up but uh, there you go there's an example of what the birds do so let's uh, if you ever get that what you need to do is just push it back in and cover it up it will hopefully re-sprout on its own we've had a lot of these ones all down here doing the same thing we just need to stop the birds long enough so this tapes up for a little while and it's uh, just this stuff let's see if I can get the camera to actually focus on it but uh, yeah it's just a, a thin tape but it makes a noise in the wind we've even moved the windmills down here to try and help with that We'll go back to the uh, greenhouse in a second. Nothing from the spring onions yet. These are the red onion sets that we'll just put in as sets. So no green growth on them at all. So you can see some of them sprouted. So we should get something out of those. The other ones that were already there they're happily settling in and we've got the same here with the white onions so I finished off this line with some fresh ones didn't I fresh sets they're all sprouting same with these so uh, I'm going to show you now the uh, parsnips and the garlic the garlic are really shooting up now quite massively and uh, I'm also going to show you Bridget's salad bed which is um, gone for some different ideas in there that looks like they may work so her radishes are coming up nicely celery that was uh, pulled out and discarded into this trough and then covered up with all the manure it's taken root nicely and is growing beautifully <laughs> uh, she's put in some bottles with holes in with the idea that in between these tomatoes will come in and that way you can pour water straight into those and it will feed the roots rather than just water in the surface see if it works actually it's a good idea you never know and she's built this out of some sticks we picked up from somewhere i can't remember what it is um, whereas off of an old marquee tent pole and some paracord made this one which i believe she's going to grow the cucumelons up and then in between around here i believe is where the lettuce is going to go so even though jack did a fantastic job about a month or so ago with uh, weeding this lot you can see weeds are still popping up everywhere but this garlic is really strong stuff i'm really pleased with it because uh, when you look at it i think every single bulb clove sorry every single clove that we put in has grown. Comfrey's coming up nice. One of Bridget's birthday presents yesterday was from her mum, which is a hoselock biomix, 
So you take about a kilo of comfrey or nettles or stuff like that, you put it in there and um, it's a kind of technological way of making, uh, I think it's 10 litres of fertiliser, which you can then dilute down into 200 litres that well, it becomes sprayable fertiliser. So uh, one kilo of that, 200 litres of water, that's a lot. Got some weeds growing here as expected really, where the carrots are going to be going. If I show you down here where the parsnips are though, you can see they are just starting to sprout. So we'll see how many of them come up. The weird thing is, those paper strips were put in perfect lines, but if you look here, you can see they're not exactly coming up perfect. And we've actually got one over here as well. So a little bit of me starts thinking, and one over here, starts wondering, well, how do they self-seed? if it's possible, and is that what's happened, because over in this corner was where the parsnips were last year, or is it a case of oh, what I think are parsnips are actually a complete bunch of weeds, and the parsnips haven't come up yet? Don't know. We'll see. I'll keep you updated on that one. So next we come into the greenhouse again. You can see this is dripping. Get it to focus on there. That's uh, the irrigation system just been poured onto the ground, which is going to work brilliantly eventually. Well, we've got plants in the ground. We don't at the moment. I'm just going to pop that down there and I'll explain that in a minute. Sweet corn, still going strong. Tomatoes, tomatoing. Look at the French beans. These are the Cobra and these ones are the Blue Lake. Doing pretty well. Runner beans are a little bit behind. But they'll get there. Leeks still picking up again. Peppers are still slightly uh, small, but when they get a little bit bigger, they'll be replanted. These ones will be replanted shortly, probably in the next week. Lettuce, looks like it just needs a water. Cucumbers, excellent. We're actually gonna get some that we've homegrown rather than just this one that lasted. Cucumelons, loads of them. Courgettes. We're going to have far too many again. Munchkin pumpkins. Looks like they're now growing their second set of leaves. More peppers. Nicotiana. And the big pumpkins haven't come up yet. Someone that I've known for a little while, uh, for a few years now, she is growing a load of pumpkins. And she opened up a packet of seeds and decided that actually there's way, way too many for me or for her. So <laughs> she um, put a little note out on Facebook and said that if, you've, uh, if anybody wants some, then uh, let's see who can grow the biggest. So I sent her my details for the uh, address to send them to. She sent me three. So the note that came with it has all the uh, growing instructions, but also says, let's see who can grow the biggest pumpkin. And if timings work, who can carve theirs for Halloween? Okay, so I've got three pots here. I've put compost in them. Just gonna make sure that they are nicely soaked. As I think I've stated in previous videos, it's good to make sure that your compost is pre-soaked. Reason for that is it just helps the seed to germinate. So we have three seeds. They look like this. Now, best way to plant them is actually sideways, ever so slightly with this tip piece. This this little bit here, pointing ever so slightly up. That means if it, if the water um, and the the compost get a little bit boggy, what happens is it will rest underneath here. If it makes this bit boggy, that's where it's going to start to rot. So I'm going to just. Slot them in a little bit. It's given us three. Just cover them up a little bit with uh, some more compost. Don't want that bit as a bit of a lump. And then 
give that another good water. And then what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put these into the potting shed rather than here because um, I've got more space in the potting shed. And we'll see what happens. I'll keep you updated. So here we are back in the potting shed. <laughs> They're not chilies, I promise. So these are the pumpkins. Uh, the variety is 100 weight. Still got the cabbage, cauliflower and calabrese growing off in here. You notice it looks a little bit darker. We do have that tin roof above us now. So I don't think it's going to get as hot and sunny in here, but it should be nice and warm at least. So I'm just going to uh, water everything in here. Yes, I am making a complete mess. I'm doing it one hand while trying to hold a camera. <laughs> now under all of these, and you'll notice underneath the pumpkins as well, there's this green fabric. Well, not under those, that's fine. This stuff is capillary matting. And what it does is it soaks up the water, stays nice and wet, and means you don't have to worry about watering so often. So this stuff is, you can stay nice and boggy and wet at the bottom, meaning that the roots from here can grow down start sucking up the moisture from the bottom and the capillary action of water rising will go up through the soil and keep those damp but not soaking wet okay so shout out to sarah claydon we are gonna beat you <laughs> maybe hopefully don't know we'll try so yeah back in the cabin we'll see how they go you never know they might be all right We'll see. Hopefully, we're going to beat Sarah. <laughs> Not that I'm competitive or anything. But yeah, I'm really pleased with everything that's growing out there at the moment. It's uh, all growing really well. Something's bound to go wrong. Hope not. You never know. Anyway, for now, take care. Oh, before I go, what do you think of the hat? A friend of mine, Jim Halls, James Halls, he uh, owns a company called uh, Karma Gear and uh, I got this from him. Quite like it actually, I like patchwork stuff and it's uh, nice because it's all made out of recycled materials. So yeah, perfect for the allotment. So anyway, as I was saying, take care, have fun, stay safe. Cheers, bye.